The True Project Presents. A few years back, I was diagnosed with CPTSD, Complex Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder. I experienced flashbacks, panic attacks, night terrors, memory loss, um, on a pretty regular basis, on a daily basis, and then, well, and then I got Coco. Now let me just make one thing clear. A service dog is not a cure. Coco didn't cure my PTSD, but she did give me my freedom back. For a long time, I had trouble leaving my house. I was terrified I would be attacked or killed in public. I found myself missing out on opportunities, on education, on relationships, on family, because it was just too much to handle with my anxiety. But with Coco by my side, I can do all that now. Does it get annoying having her follow me around every second of every day? No, not at all. She's like my other half and I hers. Without her, I feel vulnerable, naked, like part of my soul has gone missing. And maybe that sounds a bit dramatic to you, but there's no other way to explain a bond between a service dog and their handler. I guess there's one thing that all service dog handlers have in common. We are all disabled. You have to be. You have to be disabled to qualify for a service dog. And so I guess when I talk to other handlers, I know that they understand. This is what happens mostly at night when I'm alone and memories of trauma return to haunt me. Only Coco has seen me like this, and now you too, I guess. She's been trained to alert to oncoming attacks. She knows the changes in my breathing and what it means and how to calm me. Sometimes, when it's really bad, she'll lick my face to keep me conscious, to keep me aware of this world before my mind slips into the past. These attacks used to consume my life. I'd spend hours in a state like this, but now Coco can bring me back to the present fairly quickly. I don't lose full days to flashbacks to my PTSD anymore. And this is why I'm tired of people saying, oh, I wish I had a service dog like you. Bringing your dog everywhere must be so fun. No, never say that. When you wish for a service dog, you're also wishing to have a disability. The two go hand in hand. I have her because she's my lifeline. I have her so that I can function throughout the day. For me, a service dog is not a choice. And no, sometimes I wish I had that choice. There are days where people stop and point at me like I'm a zoo animal. I've had groups of people follow me around the store with a video camera. I've had a grown man shout, look, a blind person. No, not every person with a service dog is blind. And no, you cannot pet my dog, so please stop asking me. This is her gear. This is what she wears to go to work. It was all gifted to us by friends and family, and she loves it. She takes her job very, very seriously. When we go out in public, she's always very focused, never faced by the loud noises of machines or the people trying to call her over to them. She's been trained to watch our surroundings, to turn and watch my back when I stop moving, and she'll alert me if someone comes towards me from behind. This has given me peace of mind. I can focus on getting groceries now instead of figuring out escape plans, worried that someone might attack me from behind. No. I can focus on the things I need to because I know she has my back. She gets really excited to play too, though. Structured play, that's what we call it. We join my grandparents for afternoon walks where I can take her leash off and let her roam free. She'll play in the creeks, try to catch the birds, and then after a moment, I'll call her back to me. She returns. She always does. Her whole life has structure to it to make sure that she's in top health to work. But she's happy. She's undoubtedly happy. And I'm undoubtedly happy to have her. My dearest Coco, thank you for being here.